Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. With the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting one of the most distinguished couples of the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin as Liz and Ben Marriott, bringing you the love and laughter of the marriage. There's a play that you see in summer stock every so often about a kindly old lady who takes a stranger into our house and then just can't get rid of him. He runs her life, holds her prisoner, terrorizes her, and nobody can help her. I think I know now how that lady feels. It started one night for me when my mother dropped in to see us. If I'd known what was coming, I'd have turned out the lights and hidden in the closet. But of course I didn't. I gave her tea instead. You know, Liz, you don't have anything from our old house in Vermont, do you? No, I guess I don't. More tea, Mother? Oh, no, thank you. I, I was telling your Uncle Arnold about it a few weeks ago. Uncle Arnold? Say, we haven't worried about him in weeks. How is the old boy, anyway? Very well, considering. He's uh, two years younger than I am, you know. Well, I know now. He has the comforters, you know. The goose feathers. Mother, I really don't need anything to help me remember the old house. Of course, the furniture all went at auction, but I do have a few little things left down at the antique shop. Really, Mother, you don't have to bother. No, but it's such a comfort to have something around with memories. Do you remember that lovely little china shepherdess that belonged to Grandmother Walker? Oh, yes, that was lovely. Mm. I have it on my desk at the shop. It's so delicate. Mm. Always reminds me of Grandmother Walker. Besides, it weighs just an ounce, so it's very useful for judging overweight envelopes. <laughs> now, there's a sentimental thought. Yes, isn't it? I'll send you over something tomorrow, Liz. Oh, but what? Oh, I don't know. Uh. Don't worry, Ben. Just a little something. <laughs> The next day, Ben was home with a cold. By two o'clock, we ran out of fruit juice and aspirin, so I went out shopping. When I got back, I found Ben in his robe and slippers in the hall. I'm glad you're here, dear. A little something arrived for you. Not that. Ben, what's in that crate? I'm not sure, but it took two truck drivers to bring it in here. Well, it isn't from Mother. <laughs> from the size it could be, Mother. Oh, maybe, maybe it's bone china cups and saucers. In a six-foot crate? Well, Mother always was a careful packer. Nobody is that careful. Maybe it's Uncle Arnold wrapped as a gift. <laughs> I suppose we'd better open it. I don't know. I feel a little as though I were breaking and entering. Oh, Ben, look at it. What do you suppose it is? Well, let's get the hammer and screwdriver and find out. <laughs> One more, Dale. Can you get the cover off now? I think so. Who is it? Ben. Oh, Ben, look. It's Grandfather's clock. It used to stand in the corner of the dining room. Oh, Ben, this is wonderful. Mother's a darling. <laughs> Don't scratch it. Ooh, it scratched me. Oh, Ben, isn't it beautiful? Mm, yes, yeah, it goes so well with the room, too. There's nothing like gold-painted mahogany and hand-painted cupids to set off modern furniture. But it's wonderful. Here's the key. I didn't even know Mother had it in the shop. She probably had it disguised as a telephone booth. No kidding, Liz. Are we really going to keep that thing? I've always loved this clock. It has the most wonderful chime. <laughs> I'll bet. On a clear day, I imagine it can be heard over in Jersey. Mother was right. Just looking at that clock, I can remember my childhood so much more clearly. Now, listen. Uh, isn't it a little loud? All grandfather clocks tick like that. Don't you just love it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Gives the room a nice, warm Edgar Allan Poe feeling. Wait, wait, Ben. Listen. 
At exactly seven and a half minutes past three. It isn't set yet. Well, where are you going to put it? Um, how about in the hall, just outside Emily's room? Oh, that's fine. We don't really need a bathroom anyway. Oh, it would block the door, wouldn't it? Well, Pete could squeeze by. We could have him carry buckets of water into the living room. How about the kitchen? Liz, darling, it's so crowded in there now that every time you open the refrigerator door, you back into the oven. Oh. Seriously, don't you think that we might call up Abby and thank her nicely and just return it? Oh, no, no, I love it. Maybe we could trade it to Uncle Arnold for the goose feathers. I know. <laughs> in front of the television set. <laughs> oh, Pete would kick a hole in it around Roy Rogers' time. Well, in the meantime, we'll put it next to the couch. Mm. Ah, here we go. One o'clock, right on the nose at 3.14 in the quarter. The clock did have a tendency to split time into awkward segments, although I finally got it adjusted to a more or less regular quarter-hour schedule. Ben was right. It did have a rather loud tick. Our little electric clock in the bedroom just sat there smugly without a sound. The kitchen clock didn't have much to say for itself either, but grandfather's clock. There was a clock that let you know exactly what was on its mind every minute of the day and night. It was rather comforting having the clock there during the day. The tick-tock followed me round from room to room, and it was always interesting to see what hour the clock would chime. I used to stop carpet sweeping and just stare at the clock and remember the years of life that old face had seen. The hours and days and years of my childhood it had ticked away. Seemed like a sharp-eyed old biographer that had recorded the life of the family. Somewhere inside that case was my childhood, and my father's too, and now my children. The gleaming brass weights and chains had been going up and down, measuring the sorrows, the love, the excitement. It was still measuring excitement. Mother! Oh. Mom! Mom, where are you? Living room, dear! Mama! What are you doing? Counting. Twelve. Thirteen. Mom. Thirteen. Mother, I'm Portia. I'm going to play Portia. You are? Not the one who faces life. The Shakespeare Portia. I didn't know there was any other one. It's for the spring play. All the girls tried out today. Oh, Mommy, I sang all the way home. I just wanted to tell everybody. I think that's very exciting. It's exciting. It's... Excruciating. Come here, sit down. Tell me all about it. Well, first all, the girls read the speech. The quality of mercy is not strained. How did you know? Oh, I guess. You should have heard some of them. Poor Ellie Meyer, she squeaked. I take it you didn't squeak. Oh, no. I was very pear-shaped. You'll grow out of it, dear. Oh, stop it, Mother. <laughs> this is very important. I'm sorry, dear. The final cash is going to be posted on Friday. Oh, I thought you said you were it. Oh, sure. Miss French said I was very good, but they go by the rules. It's narrowed down to three girls. Well, then you don't know that you're Portia. Oh, sure I do. Helen Torello's a freshman. They won't pick her. Margie played the lead in the Christmas play, so I'm the only one left. Oh, Mommy. I'm sure you'll be a lovely Portia. Mom, did you ever want to be an actress? Oh, daily. I'm serious. Do you have to be awfully beautiful to be an actress? I'm told it helps. Well, wouldn't there be a chance for, an, well, an ordinary-looking girl? You mean a pear-shaped girl? <laughs> no kidding, really. <laughs> I'm considering it vocationally. Oh, well, it certainly is a vocation. Do you think I should transfer? From what to what? To the High School of Performing Arts. You know, the special school for actresses and dancers and everything. How about waiting till after the Merchant of Venice? Mom, this is a turning point in my life. You know, you're just going along... And suddenly you're caught up and you go round and round and round. Sort of like a revolving door? Well, there's no reason why I couldn't be an actress, is there? Seriously? Honestly? Huh? No reason at all. This is such an important day, really. Mom, I feel so... so pivotal. <laughs> like Washington at Valley Forge? Or Caesar crossing the Rubicon? <laughs> oh, much more important than that. Like... 
Like Lana Turner being discovered on a drugstore stool. <laughs> Emily floated away about three inches above the floor. And pretty soon I could hear the quality of mercy being strained through the bathroom door. I sat there and listened to the tick-tock, wondering whether the clock would strike 14 next. Emily was vibrating with excitement. Ben noticed it when he came home. What happened to Emily? She went past me without seeing me. She's on her way to the courtroom. To where? In Venice. She's Portia. Portia? Not the one who faces life, the Shakespeare one. <laughs> <laughs> Did she say that? It's the school play. Evidently, Emily has a stranglehold on the part. Well, that's great. I once played Shylock in high school. I was a very tragic character. I imagine you were quite pitiful. Oh, cut it out. She's transferring to the High School of Performing Arts. After that, it's discovery on a drugstore stool, Hollywood, and the world is hers. Big thing, eh? But very professional. She just burst in on me. I was just sitting here listening to the clock. Ben, do you remember when you could get terribly enthusiastic over anything? When things became excruciating? Well, they were pretty painful down at the office today. Oh, you know what I mean. We miss a great deal somehow because we adjust to reality. Things are grayer. You're not listening to me. Hmm? Sure I am. Uh, things are grayer. It's sort of a question of intensity. The things that happen are much more important than they used to be, but you don't feel them as intensely. It's as if there was a, a, a gauze veil between you and what was happening. You're afraid to just feel. Do you understand what I mean? Of course I do, dear. Say. Hey. What are we having for supper? Emily left the school the next morning looking very stark. Her hair pulled back in a ponytail and no lipstick. I knew she was being very professionally theatrical, saving her glamour for the audience. I was left alone with Grandfather's clock. Somehow now it was a colder tick, a more ominous talk. It followed me around the house as I worked. I began to think that with every tick-tock a second went by. Time became very thick in the house and very fast. Finally, I just sat staring at the clock. It seemed to be snapping at me now, gulping seconds, shredding the minutes and devouring them. And then it struck. It was a very mournful time. It told. Steadily, inexorably, it marched along while the tick-tock swallowed the seconds. I could feel my heart pounding along with the ticking. Faster, faster. You're getting older. Older, you're getting older. I blew my nose and sniffed at Benzedrin inhaler and pretended I had a cold. That night, after the children were in bed, I sat with Ben and the clock. Hmm. Pretty close. 22 after. Ben. You know, I could keep my golf clubs in that case. Ben, don't think about the clock. I won't. Let's go out. When? Tonight. Why? Oh, just to go out. It, it's a lovely night. But it's cold out. But it's lovely. It's much easier to, to feel things on a cold night. We haven't been out alone just walking for months. No, we haven't. Say, where's last Sunday's Times magazine section? Ah. Do you remember how we used to walk along the Hudson River at night? Ben, Ben, let's do that. Liz, for one thing, that was in the summer, and for another, we lived on the west side then. Now we'd have to take a cross-town bus. Hmm. What's an Aztec sundial in? One, two, three, twelve letters. Ben, we don't seem to look at each other anymore. Not really. Ben, do you really see me? Hmm? Oh, is that a new dress or something? No, no, it's old. Very old. Very pretty. C-Z-Y-G. Zygote. Ben, Ben, darling, it's so late. It's so late. Late? 
Don't let the clock throw you, Liz. It's really only 20 minutes past 10. Mother, did the clock always have as loud a tick as this? Hmm. Does it seem loud, dear? I remember when I was a little girl waiting for my birthday party to begin, I... I couldn't stand the minute hand crawling so slowly. The clock seemed just to be holding time down. <laughs> I remember you children used to tease to stay up on New Year's Eve to hear the clock strike 12. But now it just seems to race on and on and on. Mother, do you think the face has a sneer on it? I mean, do you ever feel as if it's stealing from you? Well, dear, that depends what you've got that's worth stealing. Time, I suppose. Do you remember that picture of you when you were 18, the one with a hat? <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a lovely hat. It came down, you know, sort of this way. Oh, I, I was very pretty in that hat. But that's gone. That's what I mean. There's nothing left of it. There's nothing left of you from then. Doesn't that bother you? Well, I wouldn't say there was nothing left of me. As a matter of fact, there's much too much left of me. Oh, I'm serious, <laughs> Mother. I don't think you know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. But there isn't much use in worrying about picture hats of years ago, is there? I enjoyed it then, and I even enjoy remembering about it. But it isn't the same as having it. Well, we don't have much choice, do we? Besides, I like the hats today. Oh, it has a lovely tone, doesn't it, dear? Mother went off and left me alone again. Go ahead, kick. I don't care. You can't frighten me, loudmouth. I won't pay any attention to you. I don't even hear you. You're out of tune. You, you have a very flat time. No sense of rhythm. I don't care. Go ahead. Strike 40, I dare you. I don't care. I'm so sick. <laughs> Emily? Hello. How'd it go today, dear? Okay, I guess. The cast for the play was posted, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Not Portia. No? Helen Torello. I thought she was a freshman. She is? She... Oh, Mommy! Mommy! There, darling, there. They never picked a freshman before, but she was a child actress or something on Broadway, so they picked her. That doesn't seem fair, does it? She's a professional child. I hate professional children. Emily, Emily, <laughs> darling. You couldn't help it. I memorized the whole first act about the casket. Mommy, I wanted to do it so much. I know, dear. Here, come on now. It's the most terrible thing that ever happened. I know. I suppose it's just a, a childish play, but... I know, dear. I'll never get over it. I told all the kids I was going to be Portia. Now I'm just Marissa. Well, that's a good part, too, dear. I'll have to live through all those rehearsals with that... that professional child playing Portia. It won't be that bad after a while, dear. I know. I know I'll get over it. I just wish I didn't feel things so much. I wish I was old enough so... Those things didn't matter. You will be, darling. <laughs> there. You hear that clock? <laughs> it's eight minutes past again. I remember once when that clock was on time. And I cried and cried when it struck. You did? Uh-huh. I had a date. One of my first dates. And he didn't come. 
I just sat there in a taffeta dress and listened to the clock chime the quarter hours. And still the boy didn't come. Mommy, you must have felt awful. I did. I was brokenhearted. I cried and cried, and the clock just kept on ticking. Mother tried to comfort me, but nothing would help. What happened? The boy came the next night. I had the dates mixed up. Oh, Mommy. It didn't really happen that way, did it? Oh, yes. I didn't remember that till just now. must be nice to be mature enough so you can see things in perspective. Uh Uh-huh. Or proportion. It is rather nice now that I think of it. I still feel awful about Portia. It just doesn't seem fair. It's such a terrible thing to happen to me. Oh, now, Emily. I think you're beginning to enjoy the tragedy a little. Mother, I'm not. It doesn't do any good to go on feeling sorry for yourself. It was a very serious disappointment. Now it's time to start thinking about how to play the part you do have the best way you can. I suppose so. And you will be good. I'm sure of that. You are? You were one of the three finalists, weren't you? And you only were beaten out by an experienced girl. I never thought of it that way. Mommy, you're so mature. Okay, Liz, let's go. Huh? Well, I thought tonight was as good as any night. For what? It's just as cold as last night. We can take the car up and park it somewhere and then walk on Riverside Drive. Oh, Ben, for goodness sake, it's freezing out and you're just getting over a cold. But you said you wanted to feel things or something. I can feel them well enough the way I am. Now, wait a minute. Last night you made a big thing about taking a walk along the river. Now I suggest it and you look at me as if I'd gone crazy. We're going to walk along that miserable river if it's the last thing we do. How romantic. What's going on? I've decided it's more comfortable with a gauze veil between me and what's happening. Oh. Well, maybe I understand what you're talking about. Don't worry about it, dear. I won't. Darling, let's walk along the river anyway. Do you really want to? I'll get my muffler and wool socks. (laughs) And you can use the earmuffs Mother gave you for Christmas. Loud mouth. So what? Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and June Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of the marriage, written by Ernest Canoy, with Denise Alexander, heard as Emily, and Evelyn Barton as Abby. To those of you who have been so generous in writing either to the network or to the stars to express your appreciation of the marriage, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin extend warm thanks. The Marriage is an NBC Radio Network production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. Ben, I got Mother to squat clocks. Oh, let's forget clocks, darling. No, no. This one gives me a philosophical approach to life and middle age. It does? Yes, listen. Monday night on NBC Radio means a parade of great musical entertainment. You'll enjoy hearing Gordon McRae when the Railroad Hour offers The Girl from Utah. (laughs) 